Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely amazing day. It is Tuesday. It's We've got ourselves a nice week just rolling along. Uh, for those of you new to the channel, do me a favor. Click the subscribe button down below so you can get the alerts as they come out. Uh, if you're not new to the channel, leave a comment, leave a like, leave something on the channel to let me know that you're alive, that you're watching this, and that you're not just a strange computer trying to take over the world. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, we're going to take a look at the S&P today, starting with the S&P. So in the S&P, we're down about two and three quarter points this morning uh, from yesterday's movement. So what we're down from yesterday's movement um, is just this high from yesterday. But if you were on the daily market commentary yesterday, hopefully you were able to catch our trade from this little bit of a long area. So we talked about this area yesterday for potential reversal. We got a really nice move out of there. So if you're able to catch that one, hooray. Leave me a comment down below if you're able to catch that one. That would be good to always good to know when you guys are doing something with them. So now I'm going to remove that level. Now what we've done though is we've created this 2900 whole round number resistance line. Right? We got to this high of 2900 and so now we're setting up for a potential breakout to the upside. We are also showing weakened momentum, and we may actually pull back down to the downside um, based on our, our, our momentum indicator showing us that there's some weakness in here. So the, the weakness that we're seeing as far as coming back to the downside would definitely be more speculative, um, but our momentum has slowed down. So if you wanted to take a short, I wouldn't be totally against it, um, but just know that you take a lot more risk because it's against the big picture direction. Our big picture direction is definitely telling us to continue in a, in a higher trajectory. Looking next at the NASDAQ in the NQ. So in the NQ, um, we actually got below the 15-minute area that we, that we reversed on in the S&P. So uh, I'm glad that we took it in the S&P and not in the NASDAQ. And so nothing really for me to add in the NASDAQ. We still have a little bit of a supply area up above. No change from yesterday. Crude oil. So in crude, we have come up to our, uh, our breakout long target area. So leave me a comment down below if you took our breakout in crude, because the crude breakout worked extremely well uh, and then rallied all the way up to the target. So uh, that crude uh, level, we were looking for a dollar movement. Hopefully that dollar movement uh, worked for you and you were able to catch that move. Now we've come up to this level here, which is our four hour supply. Now our four hour supply, obviously we're in a bigger picture upward trend. So I don't anticipate this four hour supply holding very well. Um, if you want to try a short out of this, out of this four hour supply, you can, um, if you've not taken the short yet, uh, you know, you may want to hold off or you can take a breakdown below this little area here. But the, the, the better trade was yesterday's breakout above this region. Now, I'd be okay taking the breakdown, um, looking for a potential reversal somewhere at a lower price basis. So once again, leave me a comment below if you're able to catch that one. So both the S&P and the crude oil trade from yesterday were splendid. Uh, gold was not. Um, gold was not. So if you remember from yesterday's daily market commentary, in gold, I talked about this level right here uh, and price basing before the level. So our rule on price basing before the level is, is that that essentially ruins the quality of the zone. And so um, that's why we saw price rally through that level and then drop away. We are getting some reversal candlestick patterns right now that we could get a little bit of a sell off back down in gold at some point for today. Let's move over and look at bonds and our currency markets. So in the ZN, which is our 10-year treasury note, uh, a lot of people would use that as the TY, we had a breakdown trade set up. That breakdown was pretty effective. And now that old area of, of uh, support acts as a new area of resistance. And so now we've bounced off of this a few times. So above this 225 area would be our long position in play um, for this one. In the Aussie, now in the Aussie, this one is a... Uh, it turns out to be a little bit of a bust. And in the Aussie, we had converted this to a confirmation short. And this was a confirmation short, meaning price needs to come into the level and then trade halfway into the level to activate. And then we get short as it comes out of the level. Well, if we notice, let me go to a 15-minute. Price came into the level and went through the level 
but has not yet come back out of the level. So there's no activation. So you should not, I repeat, not have taken a short yet in this Aussie position. This Aussie position um, short is uh, is still, you know, is, should no longer be a, a, a play. We do still have a really nice long down here if price can make it down to that region. Um, but on the hourly chart, we are, we you know, we've broken above maybe some of those highs. Now you could look for potential reversals in one of these areas on a pullback into this region. Next, the euro. Um, the euro, another one, confirmation short. Uh, we did really well off this euro level twice. The third time in, we came right and blew through it. So confirmation short, that level is gone. Uh, and this is why I do confirmation style entries. Confirmation style entries to me help keep me out of marginal trades. And that's exactly what happened on this example. Canadian dollar, this one was not a confirmation entry. This was just a short that completely got blown through. Um, so this one's a little bit of a stop out for me uh, based on the rules that I have in play because we got a, I mean, everything was, everything was good, right? We had a, uh, we had a level on top of a level. Excuse me, I had, a, I had a wick over wick area here below the pivot high. Um, I had a very strong arrival into the zone, and price just blew right through it. I mean, without even stopping. So that's okay. That happens oftentimes with changes of direction. But when I see that happen, when I see that my level just gets blown right through, what it tells me is that there could be a complete change of trend direction, right? Now, if I look at this from a pure triangle pattern, that, which it was kind of forming here on the four-hour chart, um, we've broken through the top, right? So in breaking through the top, we now, in my mind, have room for price to continue to run up to this area in here, this 75,989 area. I think there's room to roam. So um, on a pullback would be your entry, right? If you get a decent, if we get a decent enough pullback, that would be our entry. Remembering that this is a little bit of a speed candle on a smaller time frame, this could be a good entry point right in there. Okay, so that would be a decent little entry point right there. Note, remembering it was found on a 15-minute chart, but that would be a that would be a, about a 50% retracement of a speed candle, and those are some of the ones that I uh, that I think are some of the most valuable. Last but certainly not least, the Great British Pound and Japanese Yen. Uh, Great British Pound price has not come into either one of our levels, so we're still kind of holding off on there. And then as far as the Yen goes, um, we rallied up into our Yen level. And then we saw we saw not a whole lot occur. So after our six candle move yesterday in the DMC, my recommendation was move your stop to break even. And about an hour after I said move your stop to break even, you should be stopped out um, based on the six candle rule. So you know, looking at yesterday, and I want to just use this example. So there were we looked at ten markets yesterday. Of the ten markets we looked at yesterday, the Aussie and the Euro all both uh, had confirmation shorts. The confirmation failed with no entry. The Japanese yen had a short. However, six candlestick rule, um, you should be out at break even because you move your stop after six candles. Uh, Canadian dollar, small loss on a breakout. The S&P, nice little win on a, uh, on a, on a, on a uh, reversal trade. And uh, crude oil was the bigger winner on the breakout trade. So of the 10 markets we looked at yesterday, six of them gave us some sort of an entry. Okay. So of the 10 markets that we looked at yesterday, six of them gave some sort of a signal for entry. And of those, you've got two winners, one small loser, and three, excuse me, two, two winners, one small loser, one break even, and two cancellation of the entries based on confirmations. And so think about that from a statistical standpoint, right? A lot of people get frustrated in trading because they look at 10 trades. And of the 10 trades, they say, well, I only got two winners. I don't look at it that way at all, right? Your crude oil long should certainly have been much more valuable than the, the, the Canadian dollar short, right? And so it's all about understanding when I do get a winner, allow it to run to that profit target, that profit objective, uh, and see what it can do from there. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, that's why I put the six candle rule. That's why we put the confirmation style entry rule. A lot of those rules are in place. We talk a lot more about them. Um, if you want to learn more, go to tradersarmy.com. Uh, take, a, take, a, take a shot at the 
that the membership, it's going to, you know, the first month, 60% off the first month, promo code trade up. And, uh, and I uh, would like to get you to learn a little bit about what we do. But until tomorrow, everybody, have a great day. See you soon.